hear that noise? It's my broken rotors. Don't care, headed to a dig behind an 1870s general store. This is Bottle Net, and I'm gonna fix my rotors later. So let's just hope I don't crash on the way there. Honky tonk. Superhero putting his cape on. Is it tight enough? <laughs> Good to go. Yeah, you're doing it. Holy crap. You're like the tin man, you need some oil, dude. Wow, you're really meditating right now. This is the uh, pre-digging stretches here. When you get older, you gotta do this. Very interesting. Can otherwise, I try it? I'm otherwise I'd get a cramp and have to eat a banana. <laughs> oh, thank you so much, Dan. Stretch time is so, so good to me. So important. Oh boy, somebody's excited. Oh shit. Oh, is it a hole? Oh. It must be a pretty thick slab. <laughs> or it must be a pretty thick puff. Hey man, you still got it. more important than bottles. Oh, absolutely. Look at those beauties, man. <laughs> They're over there, opening up that hole in the dirt. I get the easy job, psych. I'm opening up the one through freaking concrete and this wire crap that also might be dug. Uh, I forgot my wire clippers. Ow, shiest. Oh, that was sharp. That's gonna leave a mark. It's like worse than a COVID vaccine. Ow, freaking hurt. Definitely haven't gotten a tetanus shot recently enough either. Oh, I can feel that one. That penetrated. Oh yeah. That definitely penetrated right there. Oh, ow. Oh God, you're fast. Jeez, I can't even get mustard. Barrel mustard, very nice. Can you get the Rebecca out, dude? Yeah, let me get some dirt out first. Boring. How's it feel to be back on the shovel? Watch out, oh, you got a ink. <laughs> cone ink? <laughs> cone ink Dan. That's Claire, your nickname, man. Clear cone ink. This guy is so good at finding cone inks. Actually, that's a really cool one because it's, it's a, Surprisingly, that's actually a good color for a cone ink. The common color is aqua, and that's a clear one. Swimsuit edition puff. <laughs> hey, do the Burt Reynolds. Those dorks walked away from this hole. They thought it was done because there's this like super tight material. Look, I think it's an IXL bitters right at the bottom. Oh my God. This is a Western bitters bottle. Oh boy. It looks like it's hole down there. Oh my God. Okay, I'm gonna extract it really slowly. Okay, I have a lot of it exposed, but as with every decent bottle in a hole, there is a piece of shit, piece of glass. Oh, there's another piece of glass. God, there's broken glass all around it. So if I just pulled it out, this piece of broken glass could catch against it and chip the mother funker. So I'm just gonna be really careful here. Every good bottle buried in the hole is always some kind of compromised position. Oh my God, freaking IXL. Look at that. Dr. Henley's Wild Grape Root IXL Bitters. It's like a play on letters, you know, words. I excel. <laughs> oh, it's exciting. The only thing that could be better is if that was green, then we'd have a, a super heavy right here. Wow, cool. 
very cool. Okay. I just like went like this. I just went flip and I popped out this penny pipe right next to it, smoking pipe. Someone smoked a pipe and drank an IXL bitters back in the old west. Back in about 1880. That's what this bottle dates to. I can tell by the embossing. That's an 1880 mold, maybe early 80s. We are ready for extraction. I've exposed the whole underneath part and I'm gonna gently push it this way where there isn't a broken piece of glass. Here we go. Oh, oh my God. Jesus, that was good. Oh, 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 oh. Wow, IXL. <laughs> oh my God. Oh, oh, oh. Oh. IXL bitters with the IXL still in it. <laughs> Oh, that's exciting. And it actually has some really nice patina on it. <laughs> well, that was fun. That's what happens when you stay with it. What's this piece of glass? Let's see what it was. I don't want to pull too much because there could be other good bottles buried around it. That looks like another IXL broken. Oh man, that's a super shiny one too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Good bottle shovel uh, weed solo. Rock on! Now I'm tapping it off with a donut. Dan, you never fail to deliver. Cheers. Cheers. Mm. Mm. Donut and I XL. Oh, great drip on the lip. That's got a drippy lip. Oh, drippy jammy lip. Mm. Dan has cleaned up the IXL. Ooh. Ooh. That's not even a bottle you'd want to tumble. You'd never want that patina to come off. Nice. William Henley really got around. Some could describe him as restless a man who couldn't stick to a place or an occupation for very long. Believed to have been born in New York in either 1818, if you go by his obituary, or 1814, if you do the math from what it says on his tombstone, Henley's arrival out west is just as mysteriously hard to pinpoint. One newspaper report puts him in Portland, Oregon in 1849. Yet his second daughter was reported as being born in Illinois in 1851. In 1852, he turns up on a passenger manifest of the Pacific Mail steamship Tennessee, which sunk off the shore of a Marin County, California beach less than a year later. By 1854, Henley was definitely in the California foothills in the tiny gold rush town of Iowa Hill where he purchased a large section of the downtown with the goal of improving its water systems, a dream that was destroyed when a large fire burned almost all of the downtown. Next, Henley moved to Petaluma, a farming community in Sonoma County, where he bought more land and again made improvements on water infrastructure. He also built a large ranch outside of town where he bred livestock for show and sale. In processing the lard from some of his animals, Henley ended up formulating his own hygienic product, which he called California Chemical Olive Soap. Shortly afterwards, his wife died, which triggered something in Henley. He wanted to devote the rest of his career to the art of healing. The next chapter in the Chronicles of William Henley finds him in Portland, Oregon, working as an eye doctor it's unclear whether he just added doctor to his name or actually went to medical school. But either way, it wasn't that hard back then to assume the title of doctor. And if you really wanted that piece of paper on your wall, you could pay a small tuition at a medical college, take eight months of courses, and then be given a doctor of medicine degree. Henley's first successful patent medicine invention was his royal balsam, 
which sold well and gave him the resources to come up with many more patent medicine products, including his most popular one of all, the IXL Wild Grape Root Bitters, which won first premium at the 1868 California State Fair. The success of IXL Bitters attracted business partners who were able to market the product nationwide especially since the Transcontinental Railroad was completed a year later, in 1869, allowing people and goods to move more easily to and from the West, without the dangers of sea travel or the overland trails. And so, the IXL Bitters became a nationwide success. And after many lives in many places, William Henley had finally found something to stick with. Bonus video, digging behind an old saloon with a tractor. I got the video. <laughs> Undisclosable, hey, show it, Chip. Pioneer, you know, with the bear. Wow. What you got? Oh yeah, you guys found one of those before, right? Yeah, the Amount purchased. That's cool. Damn. <laughs> Amount purchased. Really new hole, like maybe right at the beginning of Prohibition. But this was an old saloon here. So it could be something really cool, like a cash register thing or a porcelain enameled sign. Or, who knows? Lots of these crappy tool top Prohibition era beers, you know, quarts and pints, just barely handmade. The flasks are machine made. Ooh, ooh. But yeah, so this is well past the turn of the century. This is, you know, this is about 1915, 1920 right here. But it's all history. Yeah, just lots of metal, wash basin. Hella turn of the century saloons. Is actually an embalming fluid bottle so oh man this guy had some kind of weird hobby doesn't say there's an embalmer on the map on this lot but Here's a pretty cool uh, motorcycle license plate from California from 1915, the year of the Golden Gate International Exposition. Here's a, a baseball button, April 1st baseball. April 1st baseball, question? Here's a shot glass, capital, OK Whiskey. Pretty cool little shot glass. Here's, you know, Sunnybrook. A woolly mammoth. A wily woolly mammoth. Man. Come on, man. How'd you miss that? Point Richmond Soda Works. Got some little meds over here. Yeah, I got a Axel Foley medicine from Chicago. I mean, Detroit. How is that spot? Oh, oh Lashes Bitters. Yeah, yeah. a little different right there. It's easier this way. My back is happening. I saw, oh yeah. There's a 
Top dollar. Walking around, baby. Half dollar, man. Right there. Hey! Oh, yeah. You found that earlier. Oh, shit. 1900, nice. Yeah. From far away, it came to help us dig a hole. And now, it's back. Suck Truck 2, the final suck. Coming soon in the next episode.